I went my way, he went his way, and in two and a half days, we were going to hook up again. You know, we were on the road again. So now it's uh, Belmont, Texas, I believe. And I... Uh, this is on like a Saturday or a this Friday? Is, this is now Saturday morning. Okay. So the, the first one we left might have been probably Wednesday morning. Yeah. So now it's Saturday morning, early. I land in Dallas, my connection, and uh, we always, that's, we always get on the phone and, you know, we can coordinate. What time you get in? Yeah. The whole deal, I'll pick you up or he'll pick me up, whatever. So... Um, I call him, no answer. Then all of a sudden, I get a, a call from him. And he's like, oh, call right back. Hey, Chavo, hey, what's up, man? He sounds just off. I'm like, man, you okay? He's like, yeah, I'm, I'm cool, man. Just just really bad, a really, really just bad weekend. And just, you know, Daniel and Nancy are sick, his wife, you know. And, you know uh, so you're actually talking to him at this point. I'm right? talking to him, yeah. And, he's, and this is basically after he's probably killed his wife. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. They're sick, you know, they're not feeling good. And I'm like, all right, all right, cool. And... Well, you coming in? Yeah, I missed my flight. I missed my flight, but don't worry. I'm going to catch another flight, and, and I'll be there. Okay, I could just call me when you get in, and I'll pick you up, you know, no matter what time it is. You know, I we were landing in Houston. I had to drive to Belmont, and um, I was like, you know, don't worry about it. We're late. We're late. I'll, I'll wait for you. Okay, okay. So he gets off the he, – getting ready to get off the phone, and and he goes – he makes a point. He says, it stops. He goes, chavo, chavo. Go, yeah, and he goes, I love you. I said, I love you too, man. It wasn't too odd, you know, off off kilter because mm-hmm. we always tell each other we love each other. Yeah. But this was really forced. It was not. It was not forced. It was really like made a point of it. It was like, hey, man, okay, I love you, brother. Okay, no, it was like, Chavo, I love you. I want you to understand this. Basically, yeah. If you don't if you, forget this, coming from a man with very few words. Yeah, yeah. I was like, all right, I love you too, bro. So I hung up, and I thought that was strange. So I called him right back. And I go, hey man, are you are you all right? I'm fine, man. Like I said, I just had a a real hard weekend, you know, and and, and just you know, you know, real hard weekend. And they, 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 I had to go to take him, you know, Nan, Daniel and Nancy to the hospital. And I'm like, oh, okay, man. Well, I'm here. Okay, okay, man. Okay, cool, cool. So then hung up, and that was the last I actually talked to him. I guess he called Scott Armstrong too. We he and I hooked up. Scotty, we hooked up, and we ended up driving, waiting for Chris. No call, no call, no call. I'm calling. Hey, dude, did you miss your flight? Did you make your another your, your new flight? No call, no answer, no answer. Okay, well, I guess we got to drive. Well, if we got to come back, you know, we said if we got to come back from and go pick him up, we will. So we went to the show, and you know, the agents were asking, "Where's Chris? Where's Chris?" This is a house show. House show, right? House show. Where's Chris? Chris. Next day was was it was a pay per view, yeah, in Houston. Well, I'm like, I don't know, man. I don't, I don't know. Um, he missed his flight. You know, he's gonna. Okay, okay. So um, we drive to Houston the next day. Me and me and Scotty. And, uh, and still no word still from Chris. no from Chris we're calling him okay nothing I get some texts on my phone at probably 5 a.m. and I get a text from Chris so you wake up in the morning you've got not texts. even before it woke me up before oh, okay, at 5 again. in the morning so I look and I look at the uh, my text and I'm like that's weird it says the dogs are in the enclosed pool area the garage door is open I looked at it I was like well, that's weird is this one of those texts you get? You know, sometimes you get texts, you know, from three days ago, you never delivered, yeah, and then all of a sudden yeah. you got a text. And this is kind of the start of texting, you know, now it's a little different. But yeah, back it was then, 2007. A lot of times, you know, texts didn't come through and they got lost, and all of a sudden you got them, and I was like, well, that's. that's you get half a text. Half a text, yeah, that was weird. So, so okay, I, I wrote it off. Then I get another text from Nancy's phone, from his wife's phone, and it said the same thing, you know, the same text. That's really weird. Okay, whatever, I uh, kind of wrote it off. So then, got to get up in two hours, so I got up. I look at um, I go downstairs to meet uh, Scotty Armstrong and uh, I look at him I go did you get some weird anything weird last night happen and he goes yeah I got some weird text from, from Chris I said me too did it say this he goes yeah so we call Chris no answer no answer no answer God, that's weird so we go to the pay per view Chris isn't showing up and they're asking us where's he at uh, I'm not sure we're not sure where he's at now we're covering for him we right. think maybe you know blatantly lying for yeah. Him now, yeah. Well, yeah. We're, you know, we're blatant, you know, whatever. We're just coming from no, I haven't heard from him. I don't know what's going on. Okay, great. Didn't tell us anything about the text. Nothing. Did that, you feel something was going on? Weird. Something. At this point? Something was going on. Something was going on. And I remember Arn Anderson saying, "This is later on in the day because he was supposed to wrestle the pay per view. He was for, supposed to wrestle for the title. For, yeah, the the ECW championship against CM Punk. He was supposed to wrestle for him. Wrestle him. And this is a big match. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember Arn Anderson saying." You know what? If Benoit didn't show up with no word, he's either has just taken off to like Alaska and mm-hmm. he's going to be like a you know a merchant marine or something, or he's or he's 
dead, basically. That's, and, and, I remember him saying that, not meaning it, is he, he said, right. but there's but, something going on for him not to show up. And either option being just as viable, because I could see him just going off to become a merchant marine, and saying, and screw this. Yeah, 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 and being gone, you know, basically right. the, the ending of Dexter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Um, and then, uh, so I didn't say anything. We didn't say anything. The next day, we're in Corpus Christi for a super show, another super show. And uh, those damn super shows, man. I know what's got Yeah. But and you still didn't know anything. We still didn't know. We've been calling, been calling, been calling. Him. So finally, I go to Johnny. I said, go, Johnny. Johnny was the head of talent relations. Mm-hmm. Go, Johnny, this is my phone. This is what I got yesterday. And he's like, you know, with his Johnny voice, Bravo. Hey, what are you talking about? Why didn't you show me this yesterday? I said, Johnny, we're trying to cover for him. Mm-hmm. be honest with you, I didn't know what was going on. We're covering for him. He's like, oh, I never get on the phone. So I guess they called the Atlanta police or whatever, and, and I don't know anything about it. You know, that's the last thing I heard. And then all of a sudden, about an hour later, they do a big old meeting at the ring with all the wrestlers. And then they did this periodically, you know, to talk about, you know. Yeah, maybe, they would have like a, like a team meeting Yeah, where the company's going or, you know, Vince had to say something big, you know. So yeah. we go to the meeting. We're sitting there, and I look at Ric Flair, and Ric Flair's crying. And, and I go, Rick, what's going on? And he goes, they're gone. I said, what do you mean they're gone? And I, this is before anybody knew anything. And he goes, Daniel, Nancy, and Chris. And I said, what do you mean they're gone? And I, ha- I had to hear it from his mouth. I couldn't hear, his, hear that. He said, they're gone. What do you mean they're gone? He goes, they're dead. It's just now, right now, my heart just dropped again. Mm-hmm. And that's what I thought. I was like, and, and Vince hadn't announced it to everybody yet. And I'm sitting there next to everybody, and I just put my head down and was like, oh, What? Well, are you kidding me? This is like two years or a year and a half after Eddie died. Yeah. You know, I had another friend. This happened to another friend of mine. I was like, what are you talking about? And sure enough, man, I, then all of a sudden Vince announces it to people and saying, we don't know the circumstances at this time. All we know is that there's been a death and uh, Chris Benoit is no longer with us and his um, son and his uh, uh, wife are no longer with us either. We don't know the circumstances. We don't know what's going on. So we're taking tonight making make it a tribute show to Chris. I put Vince, I freaking grabbed him in, in the back and was like, what happened? I don't, what happened? 